We are back with you now on Wave Listens Live, sitting down with Advanced ENT and Allergy. They specialize in diagnosing and treating nasal polyps and sinus infections. So here to get into all of these details, figure out uh, what you might need for yourself, I've got Dr. Colin Newman uh, from Advanced ENT and Allergy here with us today on the set. Good to see you. Great to be here. Let's uh, start going back to something I said. If, if folks are watching today and they say, well, what are nasal polyps? What are some of the causes of them? Any information there that, that I might need to know? Yeah, so I think a lot of people hear about nasal polyps and they don't really understand or appreciate why that happens, but polyps are essentially due to chronic inflammation in the nose. Now, that can sometimes be due to long-term poorly controlled allergies. Uh, other patients may develop them because of a really bad sinus infection that just was not adequately treated. And then over time, all the inflammation, uh, irritation in the nose will then uh, develop a polyp. Anything we can do uh, to try to prevent this from happening? Yeah, so the simplest, easiest thing for people who do suffer from persistent congestion, drainage, the classic allergy symptoms is to manage those. Okay. Now, um, I kind of talk with my patients all the time that the problem with allergies is that on one end of the treatment spectrum, you have the over-the-counter antihistamines and nasal steroid sprays, and on the other end of the spectrum, you have allergy testing and allergy shots. There's really no good middle ground between those two. And so if I think if patients are well controlled on the over-the-counter medications, that's all you need to do. But if those are not getting somebody to where they need to be, then absolutely looking into you know allergy testing and thinking about allergy shots to hopefully prevent the, the nasal polyps. We talk about, to, of course, being in the region that we are, Louisville consistently ranks near the top of, of worst cities for allergy sufferers. So it keeps you busy, and, and you probably see a lot of different patients that come in with a lot of different types of issues. Absolutely, and one of the other things I talk about my patients a lot is there's this huge overlap between allergies and sinuses, and the symptoms are so similar to the two, and most of the time, it's not just one or the other. It's usually a combination of the two. And like when I talk to my new patients when I'm um, first working them up, I use the heart as an analogy uh, a lot where, you know, if somebody has blockage around the vessel of a heart, it didn't get there because of no reason. It was usually due to poorly controlled blood pressure, cholesterol. And same thing with where long-term allergies lead to the blockage and inflammation of the sinuses. And if you want to get better long-term, you really need to evaluate both the allergies and the sinuses to get somebody better to where they want to be long-term. Obviously coming in, uh, having a consultation, talking to an expert like yourself can help with that. But if I'm at home trying to figure out what next steps I need to take and I, I wanna differentiate between allergies and something else like a sinus infection or the common cold, any ways to do that? Yeah, I think at home it's a little tougher and you know, I think my best recommendation would be, what is the time frame? Um, we're usually not even going to think about a true bacterial sinus infection unless symptoms have been there for at least seven days. Um, you know, so many, um, Symptoms are usually due to viral infections, and viral infections are usually going to be self-limited within three to seven days. Um, once symptoms continue, nasal congestion, drainage, facial pain, or pressure, fevers for over seven days, that's absolutely when I would start thinking about, all right, I need to go see somebody um, because this is more than just the common cold. This is more than just my usual allergy flare-up. This isn't getting better. I need to do something else about that. When something is chronic, like what you were just describing, and that something else is around the corner is surgery sometimes the option when should we look for that yeah so I think surgery um it all depends. Uh, I think most patients who, my typical patient, they've been dealing with symptoms for, for years. Um, they not only do they have poorly controlled allergies, but they're usually going on you know three to five rounds of antibiotics a year. And that's where one of the workups would be getting a CT scan of the sinuses. Now, if the CT scan is crystal clear, we're not gonna recommend or offer them a, a procedure or surgery, but absolutely, if there is blockage and inflammation of the sinuses, that's where I talk to them like even if we get the allergies under control that's not going to undo the blockage mm. and the inflammation we see here on the CT scan and you're probably going to still be at risk of having those recurrent infections and that that's when I think uh, a procedure or surgery would then become an option um, other patients they've been poorly controlled or uh, poorly treated or inadequately treated from a persistent infection and that's usually just where one or two sinuses are impacted and definitely in those patients uh, procedure or surgery is probably going to be the right thing to do it seems like as we see more 
technological advances. There are, are new techniques. Uh, there are minimally invasive techniques from everything when it comes to spines to, to allergies. That sometimes can be an option for in-office treatment? Absolutely. You know, if you've talked with any family member or friend who may have had a sinus surgery in the 90s or early 2000s, you, you've heard horror stories, right. like all this packing in their nose, um, feeling miserable for weeks on end. Um, nowadays, I, 30 years ago now. Exactly. And to use a heart as an analogy again, you know, 30, 40 years ago, um, if somebody had a blockage around the vessel of a heart, they would end up with open heart surgery because mm -hmm. that's all there was. Nowadays, most patients are going to get a stent mm -hmm. because it's way less morbid, way less invasive. And the same thing holds true with the sinuses. Um, sinus surgery is still um, uh, a proven treatment, but I would say that's for refractory cases worse case scenarios. Um, nowadays, there's something called a balloon sinuplasty, which long-term has the same revision rate as sinus surgery, but way less recovery, no packing left in the nose, much quicker return to normal daily function. So I think it's a really, really great option for the right person. Going back to, to polyps for just a second, I know uh, medication sometimes is what people are, are trying that route instead of surgery. It kind of depends on the patient, right? Absolutely. So, you know, first night, surgically naive patients, you're definitely going to exhaust medical management for, right. for those people. Um, there are some patients who they've had, you know, two, three, four polyp surgeries uh, in their lifetime. And those are patients where a clearly conservative standard treatment hasn't worked. And there are all kinds of new um, medications out there, biologics that can help um, prevent people from ever needing sinus, uh, polyp surgery again. Well, you are a wealth of information. I want to make sure we pop up the information if you'd like to get in touch uh, with either Dr. Colin Newman, who you've heard from here today, or somebody over at Advanced ENT and Allergy. Take a look at your screen. There is the address for one of the sites here in town. There's also a phone number and a website. And uh, doctor, I want to thank you for being here today, My sharing pleasure. all this great info. We, we need it because the fall allergy season is basically yeah. upon us. All right, everyone, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.